the good old uncanny valley. Just like my hair. My hair's in hair gel right now, so don't look at it. As human beings, I'm sure we've all experienced the uncanny valley phenomenon or feeling or irk. Especially when it's, you know, Christmas Eve and you put on the Polar Express and somehow end up watching a horror movie. <laughs> I mean, all those cold, dead, soulless, evil eyes staring back at you the whole time. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. I'm sure we all experience the uncanny valley to a horrible, I want to kill myself degree when we watch the atrocity of cats. Yeah. To be fair, I have not seen it, <laughs> but I've seen a bunch of clips of it all over the internet. They flooded the internet. Everyone hated it in unison and I, I supported that. But if you're looking for a prime example of uncanny valley, this movie, the atrocity. <sighs> While I'm sure we've all experienced it, the definition of it is the psychological phenomenon that describes the feeling of unease or disgust, like cats or the Polar Express, <laughs> that people experience when something is nearly human-like, but not quite realistic. Like it's almost, but not. And that, that gets our human senses worrying. Gets our instincts on edge, I guess. <laughs> now the uncanny valley is kind of hard to scientifically describe because it's super misunderstood and mostly just theorized because that's all you can do for it. I mean, it's an internal subconscious buried feeling. How are you gonna study that? <laughs> Like, if you still don't know what I'm talking about as far as Uncanny Valley goes, look at these photos. <sighs> mm -mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> and that bunny one is from a horror movie I just watched. Yeah, enough said, right? <laughs> enough said about how horrifying that movie is. <laughs> and while it may be hard to pinpoint the cause or the root of the Uncanny Valley feeling or phenomenon, there are some theories behind it, one of which is particularly horrifying. Mm. <laughs> It's thought that it helped humans identify those diseased and the dead. I mean, because usually when you have an illness or a terrible plague or something, there are physical symptoms and physical embodiments of it that it would be good for other humans to pick up on, you know, to stay away from you. <laughs> so theory one is the pretty much, I mean, all these theories are for human preservation because that's why human instincts are a thing. That's their job, it's human preservation. <laughs> And this one's creepy. <laughs> this one got me a little bit. Even worse than all the uncanny valley photos I had to look up for this. <laughs> it implies the existence of a predator that mimicked humans to get closer to us. Like skinwalkers? I don't know. I guess the theory stands on the belief that they wouldn't look completely human. So humans kind of evolved to pick up on those little traits to pinpoint those predators. I don't... For the sake of my own sanity, I'm just gonna not believe that one and assume it's just a completely fictional theory. There you go. Now I feel better. <laughs> That reaction you get to highly realistic digital avatars or AI robots, as far as this theory goes, arises from an instinct to protect against various threats. Kind of like the subversion from normalcy or expectation equals potential threat. Because it doesn't matter how realistic a robot is and how realistic they make it to be, us humans can tell it's not fully human. That theory, or all three theories, kind of go back into the idea that when the brain is perceiving something human-like or something very close to being human-like, it has the expectation that certain human-like mannerisms and motion and behaviors will be present, such as normal human being speech, movement, and appearance. So when the brain's expectations are not met in that way, uh, the brain generates kind of a prediction error, or it just a little ping that something's off. And the term Uncanny Valley was actually coined by a Japanese roboticist. So he deals a lot with the Uncanny Valley. <laughs> and he believed the Uncanny Valley to be an integral part of our instinct for human preservation, which makes sense. And some of the internet's most popular examples of the uncanny valley phenomenon, the, <laughs> the resulting irk, <laughs> are of course the Polar Express, which, you know, that one doesn't really get me that much. Sure, there is a, a level of deadness there, but it's a good movie. So I kind of look past that. <laughs> I look past the dead soulless eyes. <laughs> and then, you know, of course, Cats the movie, that catastrophe. <laughs> AI robots, especially the hyper-realistic ones, those are real bad because they're so close, but they move so weird and you can just tell they're not human. But they're trying to be, they're trying to be. Ooh, it's making my instinct kick up right now. <laughs> People also experience this with prosthetics or masks or dummies, ew, like uh, puppets. Yuck, especially the hyperlistic puppets. You know, they're a little too close. Or I think a huge aspect of the Uncanny Valley stems from sure things that are hyperrealistic or human looking, but things that have hyperrealistic human eyes. Like, you can have other features on, like, a dummy or puppet or taxidermy animal, whatever, that are kind of normal, look a little off. But if you have human-looking eyes set into that, added to that, <laughs> that combination, that's when the real irk comes in. And that's when the Uncanny Valley pings in your brain. Something's off. Something's horrifying. More examples are the creatures from I Am Legend, Monster House. 
And I never thought of it in this way before, but but people referenced it a lot as far as Uncanny Valley goes. And now I kind of see it, <laughs> I kinda, especially Nevercracker. Another big one is the original live action animation for Sonic. See what I mean about the creepy human-like eyes? Even if the rest of Sonic, the rest of his face didn't look too human. It looked off for sure. It looked terrible, but it didn't look too human. But the eyes did. And that's where they get you. Toy Story is another one, especially Sid. Ew. I haven't seen this, thank goodness, but the Pippin movie? Ew! A Christmas Carol. I mean, I think the characters, a lot of them are made to be ugly, especially Scrooge. But again, they're so hyper-realistic and so close to being human that the fact that they're not in various ways is disturbing. That's a good movie too, though. So I'll look past that like I do the Polar Express. Mm. And the last example and the one that, the one that got me before I even knew what Uncanny Valley was, was in The Mummy 2. <laughs> the scorpion Dwayne The Rock Johnson with the horrible CGI. Ooh. I didn't even know what the Uncanny Valley was, but watching that, it changed me. <laughs> it changed me. It cut me deep in, in ways I, I couldn't even understand. Oh, no, another one that was more disturbing to me than the scorpion Dwayne The Rock Johnson was... <laughs> Ew. The, the werewolf from the third Harry Potter, like Professor yeah, Professor Lupin, because he does not change into a normal werewolf or a wolf. Ew. He's so scrawny and skinny and human-like, but not human. And he's all hunched over and like almost bald. Ew. Does he just like whimpering and stuff? I don't know. That movie used to genuinely horrify me as a kid. I, I don't know. <laughs> Everyone would always have to tell me when that scene was coming up where he just changed into a werewolf. He's standing there and like his head's down, he's whimpering. And then Hermione comes up like, Professor Lupin, and like touches him or something. I had to keep my face on a pillow for that part. Because if I watched it, I would believe that that werewolf was in my closet that night. <laughs> but, but now I realize that was Uncanny Valley as hell. And I really think the Uncanny Valley aspect of things is what killed a lot of Disney's live remakes. Because as far as animating things goes, there's less of an, that icky feeling if the animated character has unhuman-like proportions. Like, take... Frozen, for example. Like, sure, they're animated semi-realistically, I mean, and they're supposed to be human, right? But they have giant eyes, weird face proportions, and you can tell they're obviously not a realistic human being. So that's why they're not creepy, but it's when they actively try to animate things to look as realistic as possible. You know, just think of bad CGI in general. Ew. So the internal grimace and disturbance and discomfort you feel from photos like these? Yeah. Yeah. That is you experiencing the uncanny valley phenomenon which is something that all human beings experience, but we're not 100% sure why. But what I am 100% sure of is that this, you know, and this is the epitome of Uncanny Valley. And it still haunts my dreams and my nightmares and my every waking moment. <laughs>